Welcome to the chaos sector. We return to the matrix. It's been officially confirmed. Old Joe has always been Bernie Lomax. That's right. We will keep reiterating the analogy of weekend at Bernie's because it's spot on, you know. Old Joe politically passed away during the Obama administration. Well, he still had a vital sign at least. During and after that administration, he was no longer. But whatever is going on, the main point regarding that debate was Old Joe's proposals, the rhetoric, and literally the executive orders he has signed. Do not align with the moderate Democrat. He originally has been in his political career. So of course, the more radical he has become, the more revealing it is that he is not the one calling the shots. Hence, Weekend at Bernie's. Moving on, the mainstream media has executed Operation Gaslighting on the American people. Old Joe mentally farts all over the debate stage, an immediate response of panic, and then a few days later, oh, it's not as important, he can bounce back, thinking the American people are too stupid to believe that. Yet, unfortunately, it actually happens. Let me explain this very carefully. Everyone witnessed the debacle, and it only reiterated what they knew already about old Joe. Yet, in the same brain, they can be manipulated into thinking it's not as bad as they think, by way of suggestive programming. Yes, suggestive programming works. That's why the media uses it. Here's an example. Just the other day, I saw an elephant flying near a local grocery store. Everyone took their phones out and started recording. I was so shocked and amazed, I dropped my cell phone trying to capture that moment. Everyone watched the elephant fly away, being covered by a few clouds. Now, what just happened here was suggestive programming on an unrealistic scale. But the key to this is, guess what? The brain. Yes, see, the brain has to collect the information first. And in that split second moment of collecting the information, the brain also has to envision the elephant flying and the entire story that was told involving it. In that moment, believe it or not, the brain can't disprove that it is real or not. It has to break down the information collected to come to the conclusion. Then, of course, the brain throws any possible scenario out of the equation because it's physically impossible for an elephant to fly. That's what makes the brain so fascinating, yet so vulnerable at the same time. Another example, get a load of this one as well. Remember the first Matrix film, where Neo and Morpheus are on top of the building? The proverbial leap of faith, right? Morpheus jumps from one building to another, yet Neo, not truly believing in himself, fell to the ground. Once he landed, he was bleeding from his mouth, remember? Neo then asked Morpheus, I thought you said this wasn't real. And Morpheus replies, your mind makes it real. And at that moment, Neo realized the power of the mind. The point, the brain is the conscious, and the mind is the subconscious. If you can manipulate one's subconscious, you can manipulate one's conscious. We often used phrases like magic pixie dust to describe how manipulation occurs despite the masses knowing something is false. How is this possible through the subconscious mind? In other words, old Joe was horrible in that debate. Everyone witnessed it. He not only had a hard time speaking coherently, losing his train of thought, fragmented rebuttals, conflating several issues together. Old Joe was also lying as well, clearly was showing signs of being controlled by wackos hiding in the shadows, which would be the wacky Democrats. But the mainstream media will tell the viewers that it wasn't as bad, and he can bounce back. Through suggestive or subconscious programming, terminology used, deflection, straw man points, you know, the classic tactics, this all makes one analyze information that provokes the benefit of the doubt. This is how the brain works and the mind. People forgive others who have lied to them, treated them unfairly, because of what? Manipulation. And this manipulation through gaslighting was immediately dumped out here soon after Bernie Lomax was found deceased in the debate. Now listen to this segment from MSNBC with Ali Velshi and Congress member Jasmine Crockett. Joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman Jasmine Crockett from Texas. She's a member of both the House Agriculture and House Oversight and Accountability uh, Committees. Uh, Congresswoman Crockett, thank you for being with us. I, I, I don't know. I'm not smart enough to know, and I'm not a decision maker. I'm a voter like everybody else. I'm not, I'm not sure what the right thing to do is about that debate. I am sure that a bad debate performance by an 80-year-old guy who's given a lot of time to this country, who's not convicted of anything, who uh, generally is not thought of as uh, a person who lies. I've not heard anybody say that about it, who is a compassionate, empathetic being in the face of an opposition uh, of Donald Trump is a, is a no-brainer. So everybody needs to slow their roll for a minute while we think about what the next steps are. Uh, first off from the debate, old Joe claimed Border Patrol endorsed him. Fact check. 
they not only didn't endorse him, they put out a tweet proving they didn't. Why would he say that, knowing it wasn't true? Because he knows the crimes his administration has committed and is so afraid of Trump drilling that home. So in his attempts to, guess what, gaslight the nation, he claimed that. But Velshi didn't point that out, of course. And here's one that's flat out bonkers. Didn't old Joe claim that his uncle's plane was shot down and was eaten by cannibals during World War II? Oh, he thought that's what happened. Then who told him that story if he thought that's what happened? We know he made it up to appeal to some sort of patriotic lineage, so he won't look like he's anti-patriot. It's simple. That's one of the biggest lies he has told. Old Joe may have not been charged and convicted of any crimes thus far, but that has no merit because of the corruption in politics and the government. The Department of Justice, the FBI, I mean, it's clear there is a political bias for Democrats based on what has happened over the past 20 years or so. His son is currently facing gun charges, past charges of drug possession, and his crimes with foreign entities was quickly swept under the rug, with old Joe being the head of those so-called transactions. And then there's more. Has there been any reports that there was cocaine discovered in the White House under the Trump administration? Negative, but old Joe had that scandal. And we all know it was his son who has struggled with a cocaine addiction. And he is literally in the White House doing lines of cocaine. Shows how much he respects his father and the rest of his family as well, and the administration. And that administration had to be complicit with that behavior, or better yet, that crime, because they acted as if they didn't know how it got there, and claimed to not know who was responsible for it. Then, the Secret Service closed the investigation on this matter to cover up the crime. Obviously, the Department of Justice has been weaponized. Powder Nose had visited the White House two days prior. Then all of a sudden, cocaine was found there. Yeah, if it wasn't Hunter, it was someone associated with him. We're going to suggest it was him. So somehow, the Secret Service couldn't identify the culprit Yet, with all that security, including the most stringent security, advanced surveillance technology, they never saw anything? Of course they did. And the fact that they concealed who that was, being powder nose, it goes to show how corrupt the federal government is. The Secret Service closed the investigation because it would have destroyed old Joe's reputation even more, but it could have opened Pandora's box of what other crimes Hunter had been committing in association with his father. And of course, the left-wing media swept it under the rug, just like the Department of Justice and Secret Service did. Powder Nose is leaving baggies scattered around, and they all try to gaslight the American people. Oh, there's nothing to see here. We couldn't find the culprit. So essentially, it just teleported from some crackhead's home all the way into the White House. Insanity. Keep in mind, we have to reiterate this was a crime. And politicians and associates of those politicians get away with crimes every day. Yet the American people go to the voting booth and vote every election year. Yet if they were committing those same crimes, they'd be tossed in prison faster than you can blink your eyes. So ask yourself, is it worth supporting corrupt politicians where the same laws don't apply to them? Now put that into perspective. Secret Service literally let powder no sniff cocaine in the White House. That is a crime, I repeat. That is a freaking crime. If Trump Jr. did such a thing, not only would the Secret Service thoroughly investigate it, but the mainstream media would report on what the substance was, who was responsible for possession of it. And of course, Trump, his family, and the entire administration would be politically murdered on a global scale. But of course, the bias creates the imbalance of justice. I mean, if it was revealed that Powder Nose was in the White House doing lines of cocaine, do you think the American people would approve of old Joe's administration? Of course not. It's a drug-infested circus show. A cover-up, which is deception, which is a lie. But you know, Velshi in his echo chamber will never point this stuff out. Let's continue, though. Yeah, you know, it is so wild to me, um, and it's been quite annoying, if I'm going to be perfectly honest, that Democrats get into a frenzy. I mean, it's almost like we're scared of our shadows sometimes, right? And I, I think it's because we understand the stakes and everybody's saying we've got to have the best of the best. And let me tell you something. There is no better heart. There is no better man. And honestly, when it comes down to being um, an orator, that's never been who Joe Biden has been. I mean, no, that's not going to fly. It's about old Joe not being capable of coherently speaking. Yes, basic communication. Don't try to conflate being an articulate speaker 
with someone whose brain has melted into mush. He loses his train of thought most of the time. He suffers from memory loss. And he conflates issues within a statement. This is not lack of articulating. This is flat out an old man who shouldn't be speaking this much because of those issues as you get older. Yet the job he currently has requires him to speak a lot, including with world leaders, which he struggles to do. See, this is the problem. Just admit old Joe is too old, he needs to retire, step down as president, and move on from there. But here's the problem with that decision. If old Joe steps down, then the radicals will have to step up to the plate. And they know the American people will not approve of it. Sure, they'll get a lot of votes from the young liberals and progressives, but the majority of the country, including conservative Democrats, will not approve of such radical policies being proposed in a presidential debate. Heck, conservative Democrats don't approve of their fellow party members in Congress who are wacky as ever. The votes wouldn't add up for a Democrat to defeat Trump. Once again, this is why the moderate old Joe was thrown out there as a smokescreen. And Jasmine Crockett knows this, and she will defend the moderate to protect what's behind that suspicious door. That being the wackos at the round table plotting and scheming. I, you know, I think that Obama kind of maybe hurt us in a little bit, and Lord knows I love him, but we got used to this amazing orator. And then you've got Trump. He's not an amazing orator whatsoever, but he knows how to just keep talking. And he'll say anything. You know, one of the things that was so frustrating to me when I saw this debate in Atlanta was this fool tried to take credit for insulin prices. And I was like, that was the perfect opportunity to be like, mm -hmm. and y'all call me now. He obviously is see now because he is now trying to take credit for my legislation. I would have double dog dared him to <laughs> tell me what bill that came out of. Wait, first of all, it wasn't your legislation because you don't pass legislation, Congress, meaning a group of legislators, pass it. And there are two issues here. For one, a president claiming to lower the cost of insulin is actually stating through the legislative process a bill was passed in which that particular president and their party may have the majority. So they speak as if they are responsible for the bill. Fair enough, it's political bragging rights. In other words, Jasmine Crockett tries to deflate Trump's ego, but it's a fact that under his administration, the cost of insulin was dropped. Old Joe revised that bill, but included a bunch of pork barrel spending. Pork is synonymous with fat. And if you catch the drift here, there's a lot of economic fat in that bill. Yep, in the Inflation Reduction Act, sure lower cost for insulin was included. But wowzers, there was a whole lot of spending elsewhere that was loads of pork. Here's one, environmental justice. Oh, and guess who was involved in that nonsense? That's right, Jasmine Crockett. The EPA funded six projects for close to $4 million, including close to 700000 for efforts to plant trees and other vegetative barriers. So that's close to $5 million that went down the drain. You know why? Because as we have pointed out, politicians do not budget large sums of money well. They reallocate those funds to other financial interests. The breakdown, funding is provided, new jobs are created, which are excessively top-heavy, meaning there are too many directors, coordinators, and such. And while they're getting paid great salaries, the bottom portion of employees don't get paid as much and the manpower to actually get significant work done in regards to the funding's purpose is severely lacking. This is why most projects run out of funding, community centers shut down, because the money was allocated to the top and not enough labor to do the job. For labor to flourish, there needs to be compensation. Simple. If you were to visit Texas and those cities where those projects were funded, it would look relatively the same as it did before. Now it was claimed that those funds were to quote, ensure disadvantaged communities have access to clean air and water and climate resilience solutions in alignment with the Biden-Harris administration's Justice 40 initiative. Translation, a bunch of pseudo-intellectual blabber with funding going into the pockets of individuals obtaining government jobs, pretending to help the environment. Or what about increased funding for the IRS, including hiring up to 90,000 new IRS employees, estimated to be about $80 billion dollars these are government jobs being created, which is in the public sector, not the private sector. So when you hear politicians, especially Democrats, claim that a large amount of jobs were created, they won't tell you that those jobs are primarily public sector jobs. These are jobs nonetheless, but it's presented as if the common workers are getting hired by private sector companies. The private sector 
generates the revenue for the economy along with consumer spending, public sector jobs do not generate revenue for the nation's economy because it's essentially paying itself, meaning there is no profit. The Postal Service, which is a public sector job, pays their employees from the federal government. It pays itself, nothing is gained. In fact, the more government jobs that are created, it increases economic debt, you see? Sure, the money that those public sector employees make transforms into consumer spending, but they don't make up the majority of the working class citizens who work in the private sector. The nation's economy gains revenue from private companies who pay taxes, employees who pay taxes, local and state taxes, sales taxes, consumer spending, all of this overwhelmingly contributes to the economy, not a public sector job. Think about this. The estimated spending in Old Joe's Inflation Reduction Act is listed as such. For energy security and climate change, $738 billion. But for prescription drug price reform to lower prices, it's only $281 billion. Changes to Medicare Part D for low-income subsidies, vaccine coverage, and insulin. 44 billion. But for increased funding for the IRS, hiring close to 90,000 new employees, 80 billion. So if you haven't figured it out, old Joe and the Democrats spend more on, well, the government itself being the IRS, and more on climate change than actual American citizens. You could trim off some of that pork fat funding the IRS at 80 billion by half, only hire 45,000 new IRS employees, and add 40 billion to the 44 billion for Medicare Part D which is specifically for low-income patients. Now, doesn't $84 billion sound much better for those low-income patients? Well, what do you expect with corrupt politicians? You see, as we've always stated, it's the policies of the Democratic Party that are the problem. If you invest close to a trillion dollars into climate change, yet there are American citizens struggling to pay their rent, buy groceries to feed their families, barely hanging on to employment, and don't have much in their savings for retirement. Can you declare yourself a party of the people? But if you noticed, they're getting off track. The conversation was supposed to be about if old Joe should step down as the Democratic candidate for president. Let's see if they can return to that. So, you know, I'm just like, dude, like this guy is crazy, he's evil, and then when I listen to the segment before and you're talking about really issues as it relates to Project 2025, because they do want to install a loyalist. They don't want those government workers like my mama, who has always worked for the federal government so long as I can remember, the people that have the institutional knowledge to make sure that they can carry our country forward and they work under whichever administration, Democratic or Republican, they don't swear their loyalty to an orange Jesus. Instead, they swear their loyalty to the people of this country and our constitution. And that is the problem that we're running into. So I don't really care. If he was off for 90 minutes and didn't put on like people wanted him to put on, the reality is that he is 50,000 times better than Trump and Republicans will not leave Trump. And he has 34 felony convictions and still got over 50 pence. So I mean, you make an interesting point. He's, he's First of all, the issue regarding charges and a conviction is not relevant to the American people anymore because most see it as just another attempt by Democrats to prevent him from becoming president. There are even honest Democrats who are saying this has gotten out of hand. It's an echo chamber of desperation, thinking the American people would condemn him due to being an alleged criminal. Yet, a president's son is literally facing gun charges as we speak, had drug possession charges in the past, and was actually in the White House doing cocaine, and the Secret Service covered it up. No investigation by the Department of Justice. The FBI didn't investigate. The gas lithing is not working. And Jasmine Crockett is really in panic mode because she knows the black community has started to walk away. This is what this segment is really about. Trying to gaslight to bring back the black votes. Democrats absolutely lost their minds when black people came out in 2016 to vote for Trump. And throughout his administration, many black people in the lower class communities even approved of him. So they realized his popularity and his message resonated with the black community and even Hispanics and Mexican-Americans. And this is why they are in trouble. In fact, there was a claim that if Trump gets elected next year, it would be black men who are to blame. Really, I'm assuming it's black women such as Jas Jasmine Crockett who would spew that rhetoric. Now is 50,000 some sort of conversion rate, which doesn't total that amount in reality, 
Because for Crockett to claim old Joe is 50,000 times better than Trump. Well, who is praising who here? If you claim Republicans and conservatives treat Trump like an orange Jesus, then how do Democrats and liberals treat old Joe with that absurd claim you just gave? The only thing that old Joe has over Trump is temperament. And to be honest, the average citizen does not care about temperament. In fact, most citizens would rather someone who doesn't hide behind political correctness to appear genuine. It doesn't justify policy problems, it's just optics that don't result in anything. And we can suggest many world leaders preferred Trump over old Joe, and those who didn't ceased the opportunity to conspire against the more docile and politically correct senior citizen. What about the withdrawal from Afghanistan? It showed weakness. And another lie old Joe told, claiming no soldiers died under his watch. But you know his lies are seen as gaffes, memory loss. You know he doesn't have the facts straight. So you have to choose which person this is, either he's sharp, cognitively capable of being the commander-in-chief, or he lies just as much you claim Trump lies. Let me guess, he's somehow excluded from the choice altogether, because Jasmine Crockett claims he's the Democrats' version of a pale Jesus. Let's wrap this nonsense up. Never. Joe Biden's never been a masterful orator, and he's never actually been a particularly strong debater. It's just not his. It's not his strength. Um, uh, that said, Donald Trump is a remarkably useful idiot for uh, for the far right and Project 2025. Project 2025 has found the guy that that uh, the, the Heritage Foundation and, and the and the. That's all, folks. Yep, sounds just like that pig in the cartoons. Useful idiot. The projection this pig is carrying out is of monumental proportions. This is an echo chamber, though. They're speaking to themselves. They're agreeing with themselves. Rarely do they debate the other side. So what do you truly get out of their segments if there is no actual debate with the opposing party? You guessed it, a echo chamber. Old-fashioned liberals such as Bill Maher at least had the political opposition on his show back in the day, which allowed for diversity of thought, or get this, inclusivity. Although he disagreed with the opposing view, he embraced the challenge now all you get in mainstream media is so-called political cable news host who preach to the choir. They get paid to push propaganda to their audience who already agree with them. What's the point in that? Oh, it's the element of narcissism, feeling the thrill of just taking center stage. Yeah, that's it. Don't fall asleep. Right-wing media is just as narcissistic. They also push propaganda. But the deterioration of the Democratic Party, which led to current insanity, keeps left-wing media in a vice grip of heavy scrutiny. You don't know how strong you are until you arm wrestle. You don't know how smart you are until you play a game of chess. In other words, you have to challenge yourself or else you will never see how pathetic you truly look on national television. Super conservative establishment in this country has found their tool. If he gets elected, because he's never, he generally speaking, doesn't read policy, certainly doesn't write policy, uh, so they've given him the policy. Here's the problem that a lot of people have identified who are not losing their, they're not pearl-clutching about this, is that who's the, what's the best way to move forward and defeat Donald Trump in the next election? And how do you convince voters who became very skeptical on Thursday night that this is still the path forward? Wow. So they spent the majority of this segment rambling on, attacking Trump, and at the end of the segment. Now you want to address the issue that was supposed to be the reason you even had this specific show? We told you guys what this is, gaslighting and deflecting from the obvious. And the way to do this, of course, is focus on the opposition rather than address the issue at hand. The concern was about the dreaded performance of old Joe in the debate the concerns from Democrats who feel he should step down as president. Yet, they spent the majority of the show talking about the orange puppet. He is the epitome of the phrase living rent-free in someone's head because there's a crisis in the Democratic Party. And somehow, they were more interested in slandering the political opposition for the majority of the show. But then again, it shows how they truly don't see old Joe as the president anyway. Yet he's their guy, he represents the party. That's a major issue, right? He's the president, right? Shouldn't you be starting off addressing this, offering solutions, discussing possible alternatives? Oh, nah, let's just listen to pig face Velshi and Crockett blabber on about a bunch of nothing. Yeah, here's the reality. I mean, we have two choices. It is very clear. You can either go with Donald Trump 
who gave us a Supreme Court that is continuing to do harm, who absolutely plans to put additional Supreme Court justices on the bench, as well as install other idiotic judges such as Eileen Cannon, such as uh, Kaczmarek down in Texas, who handled the Mifflin Pristone case. Like, if that's the America that, that you want, then absolutely go vote for Donald Trump. But if you want an America in which repro is a reality, if you want an America where you can love whoever you want to love, that is going to be Joe Biden's America. And, and let's talk about the fact that this fool wanted to tell us about black jobs, right? Like, let's be clear. Mm -hmm. Donald Trump does not understand black culture. What he's doing is playing in our faces. Got more questions. You got more questions. But I tell you, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump, and you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. And you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. And you ain't black. And you ain't black. It don't have nothing to do with Trump. Tell me, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or Trump. And you ain't black. Oops, I'm sorry. Don't know where that came from. You can continue, Miss Crockett. And he's got people that he wants to sit up there and throw out as little tokens and be like, hey, look at my black friend. That's essentially what he does. But at the end of the day, I need people to choose themselves. If everybody is saying that the economy is number one, then please tell me why you would vote for Donald Trump when he refused to answer any economic question. He has no plan. He mm -hmm. never has had a plan. And the only plan that he plans to follow is the manifesto that's been laid out in Project 2025 that believes the DEI is the end of us. So that means that people like me, people of color, women, that's a problem for them. They want to excommunicate us. Like, they are trying to give the keys over to the white supremacists, as we also saw the Supreme Court, Court do earlier this week as it relates to the insurrectionists. Like, I need people to wake up. I know that they say that they don't want us to be woke, and this is, exact, is exactly why. Because they want us to be asleep while they continue to take our rights, while they continue to reform our courts, while they continue to say that we don't want you to have access to the ballot box. This is about all of us. So if people want to be honest with themselves, what they need to do is look at which team delivers for you. If you are happy about the dollars that are flowing into your community because of the infrastructure, because of the Chips and Science Bill, because of the reduction in the cost of insulin, that was due to the Democrats, House Democrats, Senate Democrats, and this Democratic administration. It is time to choose yourself and figure out which team is riding with you. If you want more of the chaos that we have seen out of this house, that's all you're going to get times three if you decide to go with Donald Trump because he's loud and wrong. Democratic Representative Jasmine Crockett bringing it this morning. Thank you for being with us as always. Uh, we always appreciate the time that you take for us. Another hour of Velshi. Oh, she was bringing it? Oh, is that some sort of colloquial phrase used to represent black culture? Is that your way of using what you assume to be her lingo as some allegiance to the black community? And you ain't black. Yeah, it's insulting. But Jasmine Crockett seems to embrace the whole, bringing an attitude that Velshi depicted her as. And let me explain. If it were a white woman who was a Democrat and voiced the same so-called concerns, Velshi would have ended the segment totally different. In other words, based on his inherent stereotypes about black culture, Velshi interacts with black people different using certain lingo to appeal to that stereotype than whites or non-blacks. So isn't this one of the very things you so-called advocate against? The advocacy is fraudulent. They try to appropriate cultural lingo into their dialogue on their shows. It's disgusting. And Ari Melber has it the worst. It's like he has some sick fetish with appealing to what he assumes is black culture. And you ain't black. He claims to be a fan of hip hop. Oh yeah, nice? That doesn't make you special. Because you're white, you feel the need to proclaim that. It's virtue signaling. Every time you look up, he's interviewing some black celebrity, speaking in a way that makes him appear to be cool or hip or a white guy who loves the culture. He gives these pseudo-intellectual monologues about race in America, how rap music represents the pain of the oppressed blah, blah, blah. It's all conditioning propaganda, and you guessed it, gaslighting. Black people embrace these wolves in sheep's clothing. They don't care about you. They don't care about your everyday struggles. All they care about is their ability to brainwash and make a lot of money while doing so. For that matter, they don't care about any and every American citizen. Sounds familiar? They're just the media's version of politicians. Corporate media puppets are the same as corporate political puppets. One big demented family of freaks. You know who's going to be caught in a jam. Black women, because they make up approximately 80 to 90 percent of the black vote. And that's damn near 100 percent for Democrats. This is why they are the most vocal about politics. Black men are not as engaged in politics, and I don't blame them. Because once you lay in bed with these political parties, it's hard to sneak out the back door once the ish hits the fan. 
Old Joe states that black people who even contemplate whether to vote for him or Trump aren't black. And you ain't black. How did this get glossed over so easily? I mean, the black community should have never voted for Old Joe. You shouldn't be voting for any of these corrupt politicians until they start to do right by the American people. And I noticed when comparing both candidates, Crockett mentioned nothing about Old Joe's policies that would help the black community. If you claim he's 50,000 times better than the orange puppet, then surely there's some policy that you could have cited that benefited the black community. But let me guess, funding for HBCUs? Trump did that first. The decrease in black unemployment? Trump contributed to that first. What about pardoning many black people out of prison? Trump also did that first. Uh, what exactly has the Biden administration done for the black community, which Crockett is so adamant about? Nothing. In fact, he not only did nothing for the black community, but a bunch of virtue signaling garbage, such as environmental justice. He did more for illegal immigrants in his first 100 days in office after claiming he would fight for the black community, who are American citizens. Maybe he sees the black community as illegal immigrants and the illegal immigrants as American citizens. Yep, yeah, sounds wacky, but we only go by the actions, insane, and has continued to do more for illegal immigrants to this day. So at some point, you have to realize that you're making a total ass of yourself. Going on national television supporting a senior citizen who is not even in charge, let alone make decisions about the black community. But the real problem to this conundrum is the black people who support this type of nonsense. Well, old Joe said it best. And you ain't black. This is the chaos sector.